stain on it. The blood ran the edges, was drying, but the blood in the middle was still wet, and I realised then that somewhere was this German, this German air crew, bleeding, still bleeding, while I was decoding, I was writing out in modern German, their new code book. And that did bring the war very close. The Germans were supremely confident in the enigma. Its basic principle was simple, but it could scramble messages in millions of different ways. Pressing one typewriter key would light up a totally different letter. An electrical current was sent from the keys to the letters through a series of rotors. Each time a key was pressed, a rotor would turn, altering the wiring and so changing the letter that was produced. The total number of ways in which the Enigma machine can be configured for any particular message is 150 million million million. So it was a, a, an enormous complexity, which was why the Germans thought it was completely safe. The Enigma was first developed as a commercial encryption device in the 1920s and patented in London. German banks and railways were among its first customers. But the German military was quick to see its potential. Each day, German operators in the field received a new set of instructions from base on how to set up the Enigma. They had to make three adjustments so that both the senders and receivers machines would match. First, which rotors to put into the machine and in what order. The rotors contained one of the central secrets of the Enigma machine which was the cross wiring inside the wheels. The whole of this maze of wiring inside changed every time a letter was entered. And that's what gave the Enigma machine its vast complexity. The second step was to change the wiring of each rotor by adjusting the ring of letters around the rim. 26 combinations on each wheel. The third step was the plug board. Using his secret instructions for the day, the operator could wire up each typewriter key to a totally different letter. This is what the Germans thought was the killer cryptographically. This plug board enabled you to transpose letters completely, a pair of letters. Now because there are 26 sockets on the front of the Enigma machine, you can plug these pairs of letters together in an absolutely astronomical number of combinations. About one and a half million million combinations that you can use on the front. Once the machine was set up, the message was encoded letter by letter. These letters were then sent by Morse code to the receiver at the other end. The Germans were never shaken in their belief in Enigma's invincibility. At first, all the codebreakers had were meaningless groups of coded letters and endless patience. And in the first months of the war, the new recruits were getting nowhere. At the beginning of the war, there was a great difficulty because although we had intercepts which we knew were enciphered using the Enigma machine, we didn't know enough detail about the machine to be able to even begin uh, to find any method of breaking it. Unless you've got the exact key, you just cannot get anywhere with it at all. And this is a, a major difference from the, any code systems prior to that, that the Enigma machine, there's, there's no sense of nearness. You're not nearly at a solution. You've either got the solution or you haven't got the solution.
The search for a solution began long before the war. Starting in 1931 and continuing for seven years, a hard-up German army clerk secretly obtained more than 300 documents, including the instructions and settings for the Enigma machines. He sold them to the French Secret Service. But their cryptographers showed little interest. Next, the stolen documents were offered to the British Secret Service. At this stage, GC and CS was skeptical that Enigma could be broken and politely declined the offer. Finally, the documents went to the Poles. With Germany breathing down their necks, their response was very different. A deal was struck. With the stolen documents in hand, three brilliant young Polish mathematicians, Zagowski, Rosecki, and Rejewski, set to work on the Enigma. The Poles soon realized that they had to figure out how the Germans had wired the Enigma's keyboard to the first rotor. Since any typewriter key could be wired to any letter on the rotor, the number of possible wiring orders was astronomical. But if the Poles could work this out, it would be a vital first step in breaking the Enigma. Rejewski had a flash of inspiration, and he thought, what about if they'd been stupid enough to just use A, B, C, D as the order round the rotor. And they had. All the multitude of millions and millions of ways in which they could have scrambled the connection from the keyboard to the entry point, and they'd just chosen A, B, C, D. And Marian Rieski, in desperation, tried that. It worked. And suddenly, he'd got the internal connections of the whole of the German forces machine. But in 1939, on the eve of the invasion of Poland, the Germans added an extra choice of rotors to the Enigma, and the Poles could no longer read any of the messages. In desperation, they invited British and French officials to a secret meeting in a forest near Warsaw. They revealed how they had previously broken the Enigma. The British were astonished. And Diddy Knox, he was one of the members of the team that went there. And the first thing he asked Rojewski was, what is this mapping from the keyboard to the entry rotor? And Rojewski said, A, B, C, D. And Diddy Knox went, oh, God, we never thought of that. It's too obvious. Why didn't we think of that? Within weeks of that meeting, Poland was invaded and war broke out. The Polish cryptographers had given Bletchley Park their own replica of the Enigma machine, but the extra rotors the Germans had added meant that the code breakers were still in the dark. As the flow of German messages increased, at last they began to see a way of achieving the impossible. The starting point was the messages themselves. The British had set up a worldwide network of radio listening posts, operated by the military, the post office, and even the London police. They were known as Y stations. Wherever the Germans were, we were listening. When there was a lot of excitement, the wires would be absolutely humming with Morse. They'd be transmitting all over the place. We'd really have cramp in our fingers sometimes, trying to write it down, non-stop. Round the clock and around the world, thousands of operators were writing down meaningless groups of coded letters, the raw material for Bletchley Park. Their approach to cracking the Enigma began with another Polish breakthrough. One of the special procedures that...